Greetings, everyone. This is Spin here, and welcome back to another episode of my Bloodlines playthrough. Last episode, we escaped the Madhouse, and we're now in the sewers. So, we're playing Dark Cathedral, which is the church level. So, let's go ahead and get going. Ooh, what a wonderful smell I've discovered. So, yeah, we just escaped the barrage of cultists that invaded the Madhouse from last episode. Go here, kill the spiders, and we'll grab our first flare gun. Yeah, the, the second stage is where we get the flare gun, not the first one. Get a bunch of annoying rats. And take care of that cultist, and we'll grab the shotgun. I tend to avoid these annoying rats. And you get an additional Tom gun. Man, that's so fun. Alright. Put on the light switch. Now I'm gonna do something ballsy right here. Hup, hup. Got the eye key. Now what I just did there is that I got all the bloated butchers that were hiding in these alcoves here, lured them out, and once I got them all grouped up together, I decided to throw my bonus at TNT. It's a real ballsy move, but it's one that pays off well. I get to save a lot of ammunition and supplies for it. So in the next room, we can go ahead and get the jump on these bloated butchers with the TNT. Our first secret with a stupid rat, of course. You get a beast vision, which I already have, so I won't be needing it. This next room will have some cultists in it. Alright. Next take care is a that takes care of them. Ouch. Let's grab more TNT. Grab our moon key. These switches really do nothing. They're just there for show. There's really there's nothing in the furnace either, so let's go on to the next room, which is a pretty nasty encounter, so open the door and back away. I try to snipe some of these cultists off with the flare gun, but I could use the Tommy Gun too. This guy's clueless. It's a little bit trickier aiming with the flare gun without the crosshair. There's a reason why I play without the cross. Oh, hold up a second. I don't have enough flares yet, so I'm at the. I'm on out. So anyways, back to as I was saying, it's like I don't use a crosshair because I was playing Shadow War and I found out that all the projectiles and bullets that you fire don't align with the crosshair in that game. So I played the game without the crosshair and it was a much more smoother experience and ever since then, yeah you get these two bees that jump scare you, not cool, but back to what I was saying, it's like I, ever since then I played Shadow War without the crosshair. I played the rest of the Bill Ninja games without one. Uh, that's why when I when you watch my Duke Nukem 3D series, it doesn't have the crosshair in it, and I do pretty well without it. Then again, Duke Nukem 3D is one of the easier Bill Ninja games compared to Blood and Shadow Warrior. Now we go in here, we get these rats. Oh, I just forgot. There's a zombie in here that can be easily missed. Yeah, the animation for the butcher zombie rising out of the ground is unfinished. First it's a default zombie, and now it's a butler zombie. And I almost forgot about this secret right here. 
There's a crack behind that transparent law. And a cultist. Ooh, I'm taking a lot of punishment. And we took care of those butchers, now we go up here and sneak our way into an apartment complex. Take care of the cultists. Now, there's a bunch of shotgunners outside this apartment, but we cannot reach them just yet. But I'm going to kill one of these that's across the window here. Grab the doctor's bag since I needed it. And the armor. And the sawed off. Kill the zombie. Stay crouched, avoid bullets. And we grab a free napalm launcher. Now, why would someone own a napalm launcher in an apartment complex is beyond me, but hey, safety measures, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of civilians outside, which is why they're constantly blasting their weapons. And that's why they're constantly blabbering and so forth. Now, before we head up into the dark cathedral, go behind this transparent wall to get spooked. Boo! So, we grab our invisibility power up. Which we'll need. I usually like to go in here beforehand to take care of the bloated butcher. This is for a strategic reason. Alright, let me wake up some of the other zombies. They all see me, but I see them too. Now I see all of you, and your parts, and organs and such. So let's go ahead and grab the next key after clearing the room. Alright, now the fire door is all the way back towards the basement area. Yeah, we have to do some backtracking here. Oh yeah, I forgot to grab the basic armor that I could have used, but better late than never. Alright, gonna drop two of these charges here. Hmm, maybe I misjudged church all these years. Maybe so. Man, some of these butchers can be brain dead. I'm not sure. that smart. Okay, so now that we got our dagger key, let's go on up, head back up to the Dark Cathedral, and we'll be met with some gargoyles. <laughs> oh, there's still one more. I thought I killed the third one. Come on, get to the ground. That is one of my favorite bugs you can do in, in blood. Flare gun and pitchfork, or axe in this case. Now I'm gonna stay crouched down here. Now those cultists will be so distracted killing those unarmed civilians that they'll forget that there is Caleb here shooting at them from the window. Next room will have a bloated butcher, of course.
Well, didn't mean to intrude on your privacy there, bud, but you had the spider key. Now, if you crouch in here, it's not noticeable at first, but if you take a good look and crouch at the right time, you can enter through this bookshelf and get to the outside where the cultists were. And we have an Easter egg here, too. Reading today, Ducket, Control Z and Me, Memoirs of a Legendary Mapper. Oh yes, most certainly indeed, a legendary mapper you are. And we also got this cool display of the chairs of multiple sizes. You got the teeny tiny chair, and then all the sizes ranging up all the way to the giant chair. Ain't that something? It's a little neat Easter egg over there. So let's head on back inside to the dark cathedral and move on to the next door. Get out of my way. Okay. So we open this up to get a, an akimbo guns. So we're going to go up here. Kill the Tom, Tommy gun cultist. Sayonara bloated butcher. Ooh, now that's what I call a barbecue. <laughs> well, I was about to throw a bundle of TNT at that lone shotgunner, but he decided to kill himself. There's a gargoyle up here, too. And there's another cultist too, and he killed himself too. That's just hilarious. Grab the jump boots, we're gonna need it because we're gonna need to go to the bottom. And it's impossible to go to the bottom without taking fall damage, so let's go ahead and use these jump boots. And this is one of our secrets. I, if you know it closely, I already activated the secret, but I wasn't on it quite yet. I did tag it, though. Now, on Bloodlines over here, you would normally climb the ladder, since if you were playing on the Inblood or Ray's Source Board. Now, that's if you had one unit whole blood, not playing on the Blood Fresh Supply version. So, instead, we're going to have to jump. That's right, first person platforming. Yeah. Everybody's favorite. So we're gonna go up here. Hold up. Now there's a little secret here. We go back here, and we'll get revealed a secret. Get out. No soup for you. And I'm sure all the Seinfeld fans will love that one. And we get a message from the creator. Fresh Supply hates mulattoes. Most certainly, which is why we got to do the old-fashioned way of things. Now, I get annoyed trying to do this part. Alright, just run across here to get over there. Our next secret will be right here. Let me activate the jump boots. And I found the secret. Yeah, remember that area with the cultists that we couldn't reach to? Well, this is it right here. Oh, I just absolutely wasted that last flare, but thankfully there's a box of flares right in front of me. Oh, Jesus. If we go all the way over here, we'll get some TNT charges, remote detonators. If we go back, Let's 
far as I'm concerned, that should pretty much be all the enemies in the in the level. Oh! Spoke too soon. Now that should be everybody. So there's the apartment we were looking out from. Also, one more thing. If you go to the tunnel where the train is situated. Leftovers. You get a secret. The useless store. If we're talking uses, I'm guessing it's you, buddy. Oddly specific sound effect to use when killing a mime. Alright, so we get the super armor and now we can just head on out. Time up the boots and the fetter falling, so... I can just jump up here. Oh. And that's the end of the stage, Dark Cathedral. You get to see some silhouettes of cultists and civilians. So, on to the next stage. Or the end of this stage, I should say. And that's Dark Cathedral right there. It is a very bigger stage than the Madhouse. It has a lot more enemies. It's more like a typical blood stage in this factor. It's like you get out of the sewers, you grab your flare gun, and then you use it to snipe off that first cultist. You face a lot of bloated butchers in this stage, which seems to take up the majority of the roster of enemies. And of course you got the cultists that are littered about. Some which have to be accessed through the secret just to get the 100% kills. Which may be annoying for a first time playthrough. You wouldn't know to jump through that wall just to access the rest of the cultist and get the super secret, but it's a necessity. We also get the napalm launcher early on, which is very useful against those gargoyles. Makes it trivial to deal with them. So I'd say this is a very solid stage. I like the setback. Well, not the setback, the set piece, I should say, for the good dark for the dark cathedral, if I can speak correctly. So, overall, enjoy this level. I, as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.